On these three SSD drives, I have got three of the best optimized Windows 11 operating systems. Tiny 11, Atlas OS, and we've even got, by popular demand, Revi OS. In today's video, we're going to be comparing them and see which one's the best. Unlike other YouTubers, I'm not using a virtual machine for any of these tests. I'm going to be putting these SSDs into my low-end eBay PC. The specs of that is an Intel Core i5-4460 CPU, 8GB of DDR3 RAM, and we're using Intel integrated Intel HD graphics for our testing. I'm also going to be using an Elgato capture card so there won't be any recording software affecting our results. So without further ado, let's start off with Atlas OS. Atlas OS, despite the name suggests, is a modification of Windows 10 and 11 designed for gamers. Atlas OS has its own playbook which you install through the AME wizard and it's otherwise a very easy install. As you can see here in the setup, you have the choice to enable or disable Defender, you can disable all mitigations mitigations or have the default windows mitigations as well and it's really good that it gives you these configurable options remove microsoft edge disable bluetooth and power saving by default you get the option of brave waterfox or google chrome so when you first install atlas os this is pretty much what you're greeted with you've got the nice atlas os background here as you can see we're using 21.6 gigabytes on our drive we've also got six gigabytes of installed apps and most of the stuff here is pretty good we've got all of the microsoft visual stuff notepad paint terminal all the essentials really it's really good if we go into the task manager as you can see here we haven't got that many background processes in fact out of the box we've got 17 going on here which is really good for a custom windows 11 operating system we've got 1.7 gigabytes of ram usage and not much disk or gpu usage either we've got about 46 windows processes which is heavily cut down compared to stock windows 11 if we have a look at a stock windows 11 installation here as you can see we're using 30.6 gigabytes and look at this 41 pre-installed apps it's just a never-ending list so atlas os does a very good job at cutting all all this out and making a very minimal os we've also got lots of adverts and bloatware in the start menu which is not good whatsoever if we compare the two task managers here as you can see we've got 125 126 background processes in a stock windows 11 install compare that to the 75 in atlas that is pretty good We've also got two gigabytes of ram usage in our stock windows and about 1.7 on atlas as you can see, if we compare these two operating systems, we are running Windows 11 Pro 23H2 in our stock Windows 11. And as you guys can see here on Atlas OS, we're also running Windows 11 Pro 23H2. Now, I got a lot of questions on my last video about Atlas OS, mainly about Windows Defender and Windows Updates. So once you've installed the AME wizard and run the Atlas OS playbook, you don't actually have to keep your antivirus disabled. You can actually turn all of the switches back on and you're good to go. In terms of Windows Updates, you can actually still run Windows Updates through Atlas OS. As you can see here, I've installed multiple multiple updates and drivers all through here and it all functions the same as Windows did before. The only thing that you will not get is feature updates. So for example if there's a new version of Windows that comes out you won't get that come through in your Windows update. You'll just get security updates. So yeah I think for that Atlas OS gets a solid pass from me. If we compare the startup time of Atlas OS and stock Windows 11 you'll see it on your screen right now. Now I couldn't use my capture card to capture either of these because it goes a bit weird so you just have to use my phone recording. And as you can see, I think Windows 11 might be slightly quicker than Atlas OS. You guys will see the time on screen right now. And yeah, that is the startup time. So let's go ahead and do a quick Minecraft FPS test. So I'm installing the Windows Legacy Launcher, as you guys can see here, on every single operating system I'm going to try in this video. So we're going to start off with Minecraft 1.8.9. Now, we're going to be running on the same video settings on every operating system we're going to be trying, which are pretty much all of these, basically. So we're going to go with fancy graphics, 8 render distance. So on stock Windows 11, as you guys can see, we're just spawning in here. If we throw up our FPS on screen, we're on a little island here. We're getting just over 60 FPS, which is really good actually for integrated graphics. If we compare that side by side with Atlas OS in a similar kind of biome, as you can see, we're actually getting more FPS on Atlas OS. 
Next up, we're going to try turning the video settings. Here we are on stock Windows 11. We're getting about 92, 93 FPS. But if we compare that to Atlas OS on lower settings, as you can see, we're about the same. We're about high 90s. Oh, we just got 100 FPS there. And as you can see, when we go into full screen here on Atlas OS, we're getting well over 120 FPS, just a little bit under. But yeah, perfectly playable frame rate with low settings and in full screen. And compare that to stock Windows in full screen. As you can see, our FPS goes up quite a lot as well on stock Windows 11. So I'd say Atlas OS compared to stock Windows on low settings in full screen is pretty much about the same. As you can see, our Intel HD graphics are on 99% usage, which is pretty high. We're also on about 51% CPU, 3.8 out of 7.9 gigabyte RAM usage. And yeah, it's getting pretty toasty. Compare that to Atlas OS here, we've got a lot less background processes. We've obviously got Minecraft open, 75 whilst gaming, and 76% GPU usage, which is quite interesting. I don't know why stock Windows 11 had our usage so high, so after a little bit more gaming on Atlas OS and monitoring the task manager, the highest I managed to get it up to was 83%. Still nowhere near the 99% usage of stock windows. No idea why that is. So I also thought about doing a latest Minecraft 1.20 test for anyone interested. We're currently running vanilla, no mods, settings turned all the way down. And for some reason, the performance is absolutely horrible on integrated graphics. We're lag spiking all over the place lows of like 5, 6 FPS. However, on both Atlas OS and stock Windows, it's the exact same. So yeah, anyone interested in the latest version of Minecraft on this system, there's your results. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at RevIOS. Now, RevIOS is installed in the same manner as Atlas OS through AME Wizard and its own RevIOS playbook. So again, you can customize your features here. You can select your web browser of choice, whether that be Brave or Firefox. And they've also got a link here to privacytest.org which compares all the different web browsers and their advantages and disadvantages, which is pretty cool. It also gives you the option to remove Microsoft Edge and Copilot, and you can also remove OneDrive through here in their custom feature setup in the AME wizard. And yeah, really gives you some nice customizability options, which honestly Windows should come with, imagine. If we go into our storage settings here, as you can see, we have got 206 gigabytes free and we have used 15.8 gigabytes, which is pretty good. If we compare that to Atlas OS, as you can see here, RevIOS is actually a lot smaller on your disk. In terms of installed apps on RevIOS, we've got Brave, Microsoft Calculator, we've got Microsoft Store. So a fairly minimal install with only 18 apps found in the settings. Compare that to the 26 apps found on Atlas OS, RevIOS is looking very minimal in comparison. In terms of background processes on RevIOS, we've got 81 background processes, 1.6 gigabytes of RAM in in use in idle and 0% pretty much everything else. So I think Atlas OS has slightly less background processes, but I'm pretty sure RevIOS actually has less RAM usage in idle, which is pretty interesting. So, so far, apart from the background processes on a fresh install, RevIOS is winning here. Now, one of the main selling points of RevIOS is its pre-installed revision tool, which looks a lot like a Windows app, and this has some really cool settings. You can enable and disable Windows Defender. You can also turn on and off user account control, and you can also update root certificates through here as well. There's also some Windows usability settings, so you can turn on and off Windows notifications, which is pretty cool. We've also got some Windows 11 specific ones, so you can turn off the new contacts menu and also file explorer tabs. You can optimize windowed games, you can turn off background apps, hardware accelerated memory support. You can also pause windows updates through here as well and you can also install drivers through windows updates and you can also turn that on and off through the revision tool. There is so much in this tool, it is super good. And honestly, I think RevIOS is a very good option for power users out there for sure. In terms of the specs, we are running Windows 11 Pro 23H2 using the latest RevIOS playbook at the time of recording. If we have a look at our Winver here, here's the build number and all of the important information there if you're interested. All right, so let's do a Minecraft test. So let's start off with vanilla 1.8.9 on fancy graphics. 
here's the FPS we're getting. So as you can see, if we put on screen compared to stock Windows 11 and Atlas OS, I think Atlas OS just about gets this one. We're getting about 84 FPS in RevEye, 90 in Atlas, and about just over 60 to 70 in stock Windows 11. Anyway, let's go on to our fast graphics. Let's put all of these settings, make sure they're all exactly the same on every single operating system. And as you can see, this has changed things a little bit. So we're still just under 100 FPS on pretty much all of these operating systems, as you can see on screen right now. None of them are hitting 100. Maybe Atlas and Revi are slightly spiking up to 100 FPS. But yeah, if we compare all three of them in full screen, I would say definitely Atlas OS and Revi OS are pretty much tied. But also stock Windows 11 doesn't do a bad job either. In fact, I think it actually beats out both of them in some cases. All right, let's do a stock vanilla 1.20 test here. As you can see on each of the operating systems, we've got a very lag spiky experience overall on stock Windows 11, Atlas and Revi. Anyway, that was Revi OS, now on to Tiny11. So unlike all the other operating systems in this video, Tiny11 is installed a little bit differently. Rather than using AME Wizard and a playbook, you actually have to install this the old fashioned way through a good old ISO. So you can get the ISO off archive, which I'll leave a link to in the description. Uh, but you can also build Tiny11 yourself using the Tiny11 builder. However, at the time of recording, it is not currently updated for the latest 23H2 update, which is the version I'm going to be running in this test. Tiny11 boasts a 20% smaller Windows 11 install in terms of disk usage. It's fully updatable to the latest version of Windows. Microsoft's Copilot, the AI assistant, is also available in Tiny11 if you want that. And you will need to install Microsoft Edge for that. By default, Tiny11 completely kills Microsoft Edge and it is nowhere to be found on the operating system. So taking a look at the desktop of Tiny11, it looks very much like stock Windows 11. Now, let's see if their claim is true. Let's go ahead and look at our disk usage here. So as you can see on our storage usage here, we are using 15.7 gigabytes. If we compare that to Atlas and Revi, as you can see, Tiny11 is the smallest out of these three operating systems, but only just Revi OS at 15.8 gigabytes use Tiny11 has some serious competition. In terms of pre-installed apps on Tiny11, they've done a really good job at cutting most of them out. If we have a look here, only 10 pre-installed apps can be found. You can pretty much fit this list on one page. If we look at the start menu here, no bloatware or adverts or anything on there, which is my main criticism of the last version. If we take a look, however, at the task manager, go into our background processes, it is not great. We're running about 120 background processes compared to the 80 or so of Rev iOS and the 70 or so of Atlas OS. And Tiny11 is unfortunately second to last with 1.9 out of 7.9 RAM usage. So although the footprint of the operating system is quite small, there's no background apps. In terms of optimizations, I don't think it's quite there, unfortunately. Another thing you might have noticed in my search bar on the taskbar here on Tiny11, we also have Bing search, which is really annoying. I'm not really too sure how it would work with Edge being cut out of the operating system. Like I said, Windows Update is still available through Tiny11, which is good to see. But yeah, otherwise, it's not very impressive. If we have a look here, as you can see, we're running Windows 11 Pro 23H2. And if we go into our Winver here, just so you guys can see the build number and all of that good details. Yep, there we go. That is the details for our Tiny 11 we're running. So playing Minecraft on Tiny 11, we are currently running on fancy graphics 1.8.9, no mods. As you can see, very similar performance to stock Windows 11, with the FPS being just over 60 FPS. Compare that obviously to Revi. Revi does a very good job there, but I'm pretty sure Atlas OS is probably the best in terms of FPS in this scenario, with again Tiny 11 coming second to last compared to the stock Windows 11 install. If we have a look at our fast graphics here, as you can see, again, it's very similar. We're getting, you know, high 90s, maybe the odd spike to 100. Although I think Tiny11 might just be the best one here. As you can see, very consistent 100 FPS, 
So Tiny11 has actually kind of won this. <laughs> now, obviously going into full screen, every single operating system is going to be well over 100. However, very interestingly, Tiny11 has actually got the most FPS here. I saw that nearly go up to about 170 there, which is pretty cool. No idea why that is. It might be because of the biome or there might be some hidden optimizations. You never know under the hoods. In terms of background processes while we're gaming with Tiny11, obviously lots of background processes as standard on this operating system. So they're very high. Look at that, 133 there. We've got 80% Intel HD graphics usage. Nowhere near as high as the 99% that I store on the stock Windows 11 install. And we've got about 3.4 gigabytes of RAM usage while we're gaming here. And as always, let's do a Minecraft 1.20 test. This again is stock with the settings turned down in windowed mode. And again, all the operating systems, very laggy. Lots of lag spikes going on here. Tiny 11, although it was the best in 1.8 tests. I think it's still starting to struggle here, although it's not quite as choppy as the other operating systems. We're getting a pretty consistent 60 to 70, but still the odd lag spike here and there is quite annoying. Again, if we go into full screen, this soon evens out and things start to get a little bit better, but still we're stuck at 60, 80, maybe the odd spike to 100 FPS, still a little bit choppy. But yeah, compare that to the other operating systems, there is much to be desired. Now, just a little disclaimer before we end the video, your results will vary depending on what computer you're using. For example, I might have really good results on Rev iOS or Atlas, but it might be very different to your computer out there. So I'd recommend getting another drive just like I have here and installing whichever custom operating system you want on there, running that, seeing if you like it, seeing if it works well on your system before you commit to installing it on your main drive. As always, make sure to back up all your files before you mess around with custom operating systems. I don't want you guys to lose anything out there. And yeah, that's pretty much the video. I hope you guys all found this useful. If you want to check out my last video where I made my Windows 11 look super clean, then check out my last video on screen right here. And I'll see you guys there.